welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. So you guys enjoyed the tackle shop walkthrough videos. So I wanted to take you to probably what is one of my favorite tackle shops in the Southeast. It's, I, I like them all. This one has a special place in my heart. We are at Hammond's Fishing Center on Lake Lanier. Probably one of the coolest spotted bass lakes. And right next to Atlanta, it's great because you can go hang out in Atlanta, do city stuff, and then you can get out on the lake and catch some magnum spots. But Hammond's is an epic tackle shop. They have absolutely everything. I love the fact too that they, they have a crazy selection of live bait that I'm gonna show you too. But we're gonna get with Tim. Tim owns Hammonds. He is an awesome dude and insanely good angler. Like if you have any questions about techniques, tips, whether it's for trout, you know, they have striped bass here, spotted bass, largemouth. You can literally come here, talk to Tim, get a fishing report, and buy anything to fish anything. So we're gonna go get with Tim and, the, and let's start kind of looking up what kind of tackle they got, all right? So before we find Tim, I got swimsuit girl with me. What's going on, swimsuit girl? Hello. We are looking at the live bait. So this is one of the neatest things at Hammonds is they have epic live bait. They have blueback herring, they have shad, they have shiners, they have minnows. But what I like doing is I'm always trying to like understand how fish behave and how they work. And you have the herring here and you can kind of like see how they, how they ball up. Like you put your hand down and they get spooked a little and they turn into this, like a ball, just like they would react like when a, a predator fish, like a, a striper or a spotted bass is chasing them. And you can actually see exactly like what they look like and how they behave. And I think that is, look at, so you can actually match the hatch. Like it's cool because you can come out here, look at them, see like how they behave with the water temp that's, you know, they're at and that, and then pick out a bait that looks exactly like them. But I want to talk some fishing, so we're going to get inside and talk to Tim, talk to Tim real quick. A enjoy the live bait, Swim Suit Girl. Enjoy. And we're going to talk to her or talk about her in a little bit too, so stay tuned for that. The man, the myth, the legend, Tim, Tim Hawkins. I always call him Tim Hammonds. He doesn't like that. So don't do that. It's Tim Hawkins. Dude, if you want to come down and get a fishing report and shop at one of the best like tackle shops in the Southeast, this is the guy you want to talk to. This is the shop you need to be in. I want to start with something crazy though. Before we start talking fishing, I, so I got swimsuit girl with me right now. What, you got your wife, Candy, mm -hmm. she actually owns a salon. Yeah. So one great way to get like into a tackle shop and hang out is to get something for your girl to do. So literally, like, I could drop swimsuit girl over at a salon. Where's the salon? Tell me a little bit about it. It's, uh, it's right next door. Um, I used to have it upstairs, but we kind of outgrew that space. So I remodeled another space. It was took me about six months, but we got it all done and they're all happy. And we went from 10 chairs to 20 chairs. So it's a big difference. So you can literally bring your girl down here and be like, hey, I, I planned something fun and nice for you. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna get your hair right. did, get your nails done. And then you go shopping, and then you can't pay for her hair well, to get we don't, done. We don't, we don't do nails, but we don't do, do nails. Well, Lots you can get hair. whatever. Get your hair all fancy, <laughs> dude, and then I can buy some real. But let's get down to brass tacks. So I always like juicing you for information because I suck at spotted bass fishing, and you rule at it. You're not terrible. I'm not, <laughs> not terrible. See, and this is what you get nice positive reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's what I want to do. We're going to default. The last time I was here and we shot a walkthrough, it was spring. And in spring, I'm not saying you can do anything you want for spots on this lake, but you can really fish shallow, yeah, there's standard a lot of, there's style. There's a lot of soft plastics. Exactly. It's pretty here. standard, dude. So, so we're going to default. What's it something, what are like three or four baits that you go to as we kind of get cool and, and those spots start to, you know, back into the creeks and stuff well, like let, that? Let me, let me show you one here. All right. Um, Seville's. Nice. Can't get your hands on them. Yeah. Everything is really hard to get, but Sabeels are really hard to get. Uh, any top water, any big top water plug is kind of hard to get. Um, the Berkeley Cane Walker is working good. The, you know, the Reaction Innovation Vixen, if you can get your That's, hands on them, work really good. Dude, I just um, lost a repo man. Yeah. Uh, down in Florida, like yeah. So those okay. So like spook style baits, yep. spooks, um, anything top water swim bait. Um, 
sweet baits, uh, bull shads. What's a sweet bait? Sweet bait, I think we're out again. <laughs> um, the Farleys, they work well. I have the Farleys here. What, so what's a Farley? Baits, oh, it's the same. Yeah, so, it's, and so this is for people like me who are novices, and I, all of these mimic bluebacks pretty yeah, it's much. It's more of a heron, heron style deal. A heron style deal. Yeah. How are you actually fishing this? Because this is, I went out with my buddy Jacob Wall, he's an FLW angler, mm -hmm. and we were actually fishing, we are fishing Gunnersville, but he was fishing a bull shad, dude, and he would literally... Was he burning it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, right now, when they're when they're chasing them here, you cannot reel it fast enough. But is that so, how you, like, you cover water to fish it's it? What, it's, if you're running down the banks and running down grass flats and stuff like that, yeah, burning it works great because you're covering, but typically here, we're targeting brush, and there's okay. a thousand different ways you can work it over brush. Uh, hold your rod up, reel it, reel it real fast, keep it on top, let it just kind of make a bunch of noise, skip across the top and stuff like that. Or you put your rod tip down and just slow reel it over top of that brush. Okay. And when you feel one start to nap on it, start speeding it up a little bit. And that typically will get one to commit so to So I guess it, it's kind of like fishing soft plastics in the sense that you got to figure out a cadence. That's it. Like it's, yeah. so you, but remember to try to burn it. Like that's, that, that's an option and sometimes that's the only thing they'll react to, but slow rolling it and doing some other things. Yep. So that kind of leads into something else I want to talk about. I don't know the regulations in Georgia. Can you throw an A-rig in Georgia? Yeah. Okay, can you throw a five, five hook? Hooks, yeah. Okay, so one thing I've learned in Gunnersville, which blew my mind, dude, is in fall, we use these dinky little tiny swim baits, dude. What kind of swim baits do you put on your rigs and that's, here? That's fine when they're eating threadfin. Okay. So when they get around threadfin, that's perfectly fine. But whenever they're eating heron, and you're around heron eaters or gizzard shad eaters, you want to bump that up. You want to get to your, you know, your three point eights, your four point threes, your, you know, even your five eights on the center. Really? So, yeah. I mean, a heron, a six inch heron is that big. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's true. I was just looking at your live bait. I mean, they are pretty. So. so show me. There's one color I want to show you, and I can't like emphasize it enough because Tim actually helped to design it, and it is literally my favorite swim bait color. But before we do that. One other question that I have, the Lanier is a little deeper. It's not a super deep spot like, like Smith is, but it is a little it's bit, still pretty deep. it's still yeah, pretty deep. I mean, two weeks ago, I was catching them over 80 foot of water. That would be we, awesome. we like to call them ghost fish, but I mean, when they're schooling up like that, I mean, you go catch them over 80 foot of water, that's nothing. And I don't have a boat, so okay. nice job, Mike. Yeah, come to Hammonds, they said, bring your boat. <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you though, before we go look at that color is, uh, when, you, when you're talking about a rig, so I've been told to throw as light as possible, but then I go to Smith, and I know those fish are up in the water column, but up in the water column over 60 foot is still like 10 feet deep. Yeah, light, 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 is possible. You light is using? possible only really entails, if you're going shallow, or if you're fishing around docks, you want something light, because you, you want that rig in the strike zone longer. Right. So. I'm not really worried about that when I'm throwing it over brush, over long points, and you know stuff like that. If I'm ditch fishing in the winter time, I don't really have to have it light. I'm okay. throwing I'm throwing eighth ounce on everything, and I'll throw like a half ounce fish head, or maybe even uh, okay. on the bottom, or even maybe in in the middle. So you actually mix a like a fish head, like an under? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is the cool. So an A rig with like a fish, head. dude. And I'm you don't have to. Have have to with you don't have to have the same colors. On no, I agree with just, that. You can just mix it all up. I agree 100%. They really don't care. But I like to have something with the same color and then one different one because typically that's the one they go after. So let me ask you this then too. We were just up at, actually I texted you when we were up at Flippers up on Old Hickory and we were talking to Jessica. She kind of runs Flippers for Flip mm -hmm. and um, she was talking about how you want say four one size and one slightly bigger. Yes. Do you, are that's you a believer like in that? Really? That's what I like to do. All right, well, let's go Been look at some that. of these colors, that that, dude. For a while, so. It's very sneaky. That aisle right there, I mean, that, it's, it gets pretty crowded on the weekends. In yeah, here. I can imagine. But uh, that's hard to beat on a Kytec. Well, what's cool. your Kytec color choice then? Let, let's do that real quick yeah. as long as we're here. Tennessee Shad, Rainbow Shad, Gizzard Shad, Threadfish Shad, they all kind of look alike. Okay. Until you get to like your sight flashes. And now they have sight flash green, sight flash blue. Okay. Um, those are great on cloudy days. But if you look at all these, the majority of them in the water almost look the same as far as the gizzer shads and, you know, you can go darker with like a silver flash minnow, but most of them look the same. Okay. So anything that looks like a shad, roll with it. All right. So let's go see this color though, because I, and it's literally called Hammond's blah, like it, it's Hammond's herring. I'll just throw it out there, but it's probably one of my favorite colors. Put it on a trailer on a chatter bait. If you have shad, herring, or whatever kind of whitish color bait fish, this, I love this. Yeah, dude. this is an easy vibe. Easy vibes are really nice. That mm -hmm. is. Drop them all on the floor. See that belly yeah. is really 
we could take this thing out and put it in the tank and it's going to look almost just like a herring. So. That's the thing that blows my mind though too because everybody, they're called blueback herring, but they're they're actually kind of like a water, because the, the water is green. Yeah, they're, they're not so, actually blue. You'll see, you'll see in our tank, our white walls uh -huh. um, actually change them to that lighter color. Okay. But typically they're a little darker okay. when, when they're in the lake um, until they get up around the sandy beaches and stuff and they turn that, they'll kind of adapt to that, okay. that color. So. so once again, it's watercolor, but and we've talked about this in other videos. Like, yes, it's about what the bait fish looks like, but the bait fish should change it, whether it's brim, bluegill, okay. like they change based upon the watercolor and also based upon the bottom composition. Like if it's, you know, there's a bunch of grass, they're gonna look more green, you know? Right. If, it, if the water's darker, they're gonna get darker. So, all right, so let's do, the other thing that I absolutely love is, is jerk baits this time of year. Is that, is that like a pick for yes, you? that's great, yeah. I mean, what kind of jerk baits do you recommend? We've talked about the Megabass 110s. Let's do okay. something different. What else do you use? I mean, Lucky Craft is always a good staple. So, uh, Sixth Sense makes some great jerk baits. Yeah, and they have a good price point and they so, look awesome too. I mean, I think I'm out of almost all of the Sixth Sense jerk baits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the KVD is okay. great right up here. That's and those a, are good price a, points. Yeah, they're great price point. Um, and they, they work. So then Yeah, you, you can't beat these jokers. Stuff. Really, really tough to beat. Um, you know what? That's actually a good question. So I'm looking at this. I actually have this 5-8. This is a, a Lucky Craft. I don't think they call it. They call it a screw pointer. Yeah. So I, I know you're, you're, you're a tackle shop. You have to sell everything in that's that. Right. That's right. Does it matter? If it's a dual realis, or do you, do you throw a spy bait first? Of all? I, yeah, I throw, I throw a spy bait. What spy bait do you throw? But I, it's mostly a realis. It is a realis. Their shimmy is just a little different. The spro makes a good one too that works okay. during different times. I don't typically throw the screw punter, but that's just me personally. Okay. Everybody's got preferences. Obviously, I sell them, I carry them. Yeah. They sell. But I, I just the bought spro, one. The spro because works it's as well. Okay. But it's a little lighter. Okay. But the, the Alpha 72 is the one I like to throw. That's a dual reality? Yeah, I can throw what it on a bait caster. Okay, um, that's what I was on. I like to throw it on an eight pound test with a bait caster. That light. Yeah, it's nice. And it matters. You cast it a mile. But does it matter so, though? Does it matter? The that profile the is just a little different and not as many people has caught on to it yet. Okay. But that profile really for me, it has a little bit bigger shimmy running okay. through the water and I freaking love it. And you can burn it. That's yeah. the one thing I like about it. So if I get around some schooling fish, that thing, boom, it's getting eaten. Really? No doubt. So. All right, I'm gonna have to, because I've been throwing the Lucky Craft. I've caught some fish on it, but I have been told not only by Tim, but by a couple other anglers, I really need to try the Duo Realis. They all have their place and time, right. just like any bait, but that Duo Realis is the one you start with. Typically, if they have that skinnier profile, I'm gonna do more slow, slow reeling with it. If it has that little wider, fatter profile, you can kind of burn it and it doesn't twist as much in the water. So if I was to take a, an 80 and burn it, it wants to kind of twist a lot on me. So yeah. I take the 72 and it, I can it just burn holds it. tight. Yeah, it holds tight. Well, something that I love to do in these, and I know your shop has it because there's a lot of guys that make their own stuff. Can you show me something that's local? Yeah, yeah. so we got Georgia Jig, Spot Sticker Baits. I mean, this whole end cap is Spot Sticker Baits. This whole end cap is Spot Sticker Baits. And they make, I mean, that's yeah, almost like a robo worm arms. kind yes. of deal. Those are all hand poured and, and stuff. Custom jigs. Because you guys throw a shaky head a lot here too for spots, yes, right? Absolutely. I mean, that whole, all of this is shaky heads. Jesus. Pretty much. And I got a couple of a couple of jigs on the bottom, just naked jigs on the bottom. What the hell is that? It's is, a crawler head. So It's like a stand up head? Yeah, it's like a, so basically you just want to, the way I like to throw it is just put a twin tail on it. Or okay. A skirted twin tail and you just throw it out there and just drag it. And when you're dragging it, it wants to stand it up more so than just kind of roll it. So it kind of stands up more. That's really so, cool. It's pretty sweet. I might have we to use grab them a lot here. Those. It's more in the uh, the fall is what okay. I'm throwing them. Brian would probably disagree, but <laughs> I throw it more in the fall. Okay. It's a great fall bait. When they get up on those rocky points, you throw it up there and just kind of drag it off those rocks and it keeps it stood up yeah. pretty, pretty well. So It definitely makes, I got schooled by, I got a friend on Gunnersville, dude, we were ledge fishing, and he actually had stand-up footballs. Mm -hmm. And I was throwing just like a ball head, standard little finesse jig, dude, took me, to school, dude, just ripped yeah, it. Wants it. To, like, the ball heads just gonna kind of roll. Exactly. So when they hit something, they roll, which is great when they're when they're on that bite. But I, I want to keep it up in the zone. It, Typically, yeah. when a crawfish is in a tank, it's it's pointing up, especially yeah. when it's in that that yeah, reactive position. defensive position. So, yeah. Very yes, cool. Sir, so we got you got your dirty tackle jigs there. That's Foss Sticker makes their he got his own hand tied custom jigs. Very nice. 
then you got the Georgia jig, which is a huge staple in this lake. What's a Georgia jig? Just just another company that is that like an arky head or yeah. So they got some of the only living rubber. Oh yeah, square yeah, living yeah. rubber around. You know, it's hard to find that stuff. So we sell a ton of, them. and they got the the old school Ultra Vibe blades. Whoa! So it's hard. Those are hard to find as well. That is, I've never actually seen anything like that. What do you What do you put that on? Spinnerbait. We got them over here. Check this out. Okay. Tim, you're killing me, dude. So, well, it's I gotta ask, do I get a little bit of a discount here, at least? <laughs> because uh, you show me way too much. The spot stuff. sticker also makes their own spinner base. No, the these are the compact ones. Yeah, those are the mini me's. Uh, Wait a sec. Does, there's another brand that makes these too, right? Like, uh, like a Picasso or something. Mm -hmm. A War Eagle, mate. Well, War Eagles are here. You can tell that's really hard. It's though. not those the War really Eagle. Uh, so I actually, well, you're not gonna like this. I bought one that's like this off of Tackle Warehouse, though, with right. like the painted blades. But Tackle Warehouse sells them. They sell a couple, but they don't have this. I mean, dude, like that. He's actually working on an order right now. Dude, this is Georgia Jig. So this is the same company we were talking about over there. Okay. This is Georgia Jig. She, they, they, they both do a Bro. really good job with those as well. But so you got your Ultra Vibe. Oh, so they come standard with it. Yeah. Uh, I might have to pick up a couple of those. And so, once again, this is... just a different flash in the water, something they're not used to. And it's more compact. I mean, I especially see it with the... Because yeah, this the is... This particular head is made super That's made for compact. spots. Like, yeah, that's, that's a smallmouth or a spot jig. If you guys look at it, like, the arm is kind of in... And you can run this through brush like killer, dude. Right, like, and you, you take that thing up to Clark Hill, and you're going to catch some largemouth on it for sure. Clark Hill. Is that north of here? Uh, southeast. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna grab some. So if I actually let's do this. If I want one color of these jokers, I already have this guy. This is the one that I have. What's yeah, another color? So if you're, I like the tilapia, a lot. With that green in yeah, it, like that. Because that green is like that's what most of the shad in the lake look like. So right. You really cannot go wrong with tilapia. Either tilapia or something white. That's what I go with in a spinnerbait. And in general, it's a half ounce, right? You don't. So, do you, you don't half go down three to quarter. a three. I, like, I even go to a one. Really? So, especially when, when they want it burned, that one stays down and the blades don't come out and flop. Really? So I can burn a one. So you're, so you're not even slow rolling a one. You're, you're burning no, you're a burning, one. Yeah, when, when I've got a one in my hand, I'm burning it. To, That's Because it's staying down in the water column. That's crazy, so. dude. So we got one more spinnerbait here. And this is something, we throw a spinnerbait like in Florida, but honestly, if you're throwing a spinnerbait, you kind of, it's kind of an old school feeling. And I've noticed up here, spinnerbait works, dude. And you can fish it a lot like you fish an A-Rig, but in a hundred thousand things that you're gonna hang an A-Rig. So what do you got here, Tim? Like these are super bright, dude. They look like so, goldfish. Yeah, so I mean, we got a lot of water coming into the lake right now. So if you get on that good spinnerbait bite and the water dirties up, that's your color. You go to Oconee, Sinclair, places like that. A lot of, a lot of Tennessee places got a little, little color to yeah. it. That's, that's going to be the With color. With the there. orange blade? Oh, it's unbelievable. Really? Yeah, those are sell tons of them, especially when it gets time. We just got these in a couple of days ago. So, so I should probably buy one because they're, they're not going to hang around. <clears throat> they won't be here very long now. And as long as I, we're doing the spinnerbait thing, let me ask you, are you a gold blade guy? Are you a silver blade guy? I what's, mean, I'm what's your a pick? Silver, silver blade guy. Um, okay. Unless I get around some brim breads and stuff, I might switch that up. But okay. it's kind of hard to go away from a silver or a white blade. So a painted white, blade. Yeah, painted white blade. Yeah. Really? So that painted white blade right there is is tough to beat on a good cloudy day. It just lets them track it a little better and get on it. Is that a spot thing too? The painted no. blade? No. no you, can you catch, catch large mouth. You catch large mouth on Coney on this all the time. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So. Th he has awesome stuff in here, and, it, and it's epic, like from an artificial standpoint. But really, it, especially if you got kids or something, and you want to come in here, you got to go outside. We, yeah. we got to go yeah, outside. Yeah, we got to go outside. We got some turtles now. I, <laughs> yeah, we got turtles. Yeah, <laughs> they're go, pets. Let's go. Yeah, not, we don't sell them. You don't? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, we don't sell them. These, these guys are. Uh, Mother-in-law had a uh, daycare that was shutting down. She owned the building, and. They had turtles, little baby turtles, from uh, Red Ear Sliders from Panama City. Well, they've been in a cage about like this their whole life. Well, the daycare shut down. They're looking for somewhere to, for them to go. So, we've got this thousand gallon tank here. They just loving life. What's up, Bobby? So, what do they eat? Uh, minnows, crickets, turtle food. I mean, worms, anything you throw in there, they'll eat it, except these guys do not do well with vegetables. Really? Yeah, he'll typically, he'll eat a minnow out of my hand. So they're they're predators or whatever, yeah, really. But let me tell you something, you throw a cricket in there, it ain't lasting long, it ain't lasting long. 
So, so. You, get, you can get your hair did and come down to the petting zoo, dude, and we're gonna check out the turtles. All right, let, let's see the, the juice of herrings. Well, we got, we got so. small, medium, large, and shiners on this side. Okay. Which, I mean, I typically sell a whole tank of, of each of these every week. So you got your small, you got your medium, you got your large, and not, these will all be gone by this time next week. And these are all domestic shiners, right? Uh, these come from Arkansas, typically. Oh, really? Yep, we get them, we get them pumped in. This is always my favorite, dude. Yeah, these guys right here, you can tell that really, that is really, really close to that color we were talking about. So, if I can get a hold of one. Look at that. Dude, that, wow. yeah. Almost. Maybe I can turn on the slow mo. <laughs> yeah. Whew, these things are slimy. See how close yeah. that is. That is really dude. close. And a lot of that is because of the white walls we have in the tanks. They, they typically will adjust to the surroundings for the most part. They come in pretty dark. So but you can it's tell, still dark green though, yeah, right? Check it's the ones that have been out here up top. There's a little dark sand up top. Yep. Yeah. So, that is nuts. Yep. And I've got, right now I have seven full tanks of herring. Seven 1,000 gallon tanks of herring. And I get those from my buddy at, uh, up in Hartwell, Johnny uh -huh. Bagwell. Lanier, uh, you know, it's uh, Lake Hartwell Outdoor Center. He does, uh, brings us all our stuff. When it comes to Heron. So, I don't know if I get this yet. If I have it, we'll see. So, yeah, should get it. Oh my yeah. god, dude. So, these guys, I can, probably, I can probably catch one of these in my hand. This will be fun. Look at that. Ah, oh, right there. Dude. So, same deal. You get them in the white tanks, they adjust to their surroundings, and it's got that same color, the Hammond's hair in there. That's crazy. That we use so much. So, I heard Shadow really hard to keep. When, if I were to actually get, like, say, a dozen or two dozen of these, you're going to you're gonna have to have a big tank. A big tank? So I can't just put them in a bucket with a no, bubbler not, or something? not the shack. No, okay. you, you can put, like, a dozen and a half to two dozen in a five-gallon bucket. Okay. This time of year, it's just starting to cool down. But during the summertime, you're looking at a dozen for a five-gallon bucket. It's usually two baits per gallon. Wow. So that's... They, they need a lot of oxygen. They need a lot. I mean, you can see the aerators we have yeah, rolling. I've got filter really... pumps running. Yeah, yeah. Everything's ran through pool pumps in the back. So, so all of these guys, uh, if you're coming to Lanier and you want to hang, or any of the, the local lakes, pretty much, all of these baits will catch you striper, largemouth, okay. catfish, you name it. Spot, you name catch it, yeah. walleye on them. I mean, Seriously? Yeah, if, if you can find some. If they're not can... easy to catch. <laughs> walleye are more of a timber fish, so you're going to have to be around the timber. I usually catch about one or two a year, okay. bass fishing, if that tells you. Okay, so that's when you buy a lot of typically and... common. But huh. I crappie I'll eat them. I've got some monster crappie on them. Really? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna wrap this thing up. If you guys have any questions, oh wait, hold on for a second. One other thing I wanna throw in there. I'm all about convenience, and I know you are too. That's so right. next door, is it a racetrack? It's a racetrack, yeah. Dude, they opened a gas station next door, and I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite places, or my favorite things to do at a gas station is get a cup of coffee, and it has to be a decent one, and I've stopped at a lot of gas stations that absolutely suck with coffee. Racetrack does it, and they have literally a racetrack. It's right yeah. next door. It's right next door. You even got to leave the parking lot. Get a beef jerky, yeah, get a nice. coffee. Put your it. boat up, stop in here. It's, it's typically a one-stop corner now for us. That is kind of nice. Because there is a little bit of traffic around here, to Absolutely. be realistic. It so it's a big difference. Slide in, grab difference. everything you need, grab your ice, and go. Well, enough plug for that. So let's wrap this thing up. Uh, Tim. I know you guys do online ordering. Yes. Um, and also, if you guys just want to like call and get a fishing report and stuff like that, or stop on in, they're open for business. But where can they find you online? Social media. Hammondsfishing.com. Hammondsfishing.com. Yep, that's our online store. It's got everything you need right there. I have noticed too. If you just go to Google and type in Hammonds Fishing, like that's what comes because come there is no other Hammonds Fishing. That's but right. bro, thank, thank you. In the time of COVID, COVID daps. But definitely check him out. It's a great shop. This is one great dude. I've seen kind of the evolution of this shop as, I, as I've been a part of like the free tournaments and stuff up here. And actually, a note, we'll be running a gambler free tournament in spring. We don't have a date locked in, but it's usually one of the most fun events to come down to. And when I don't come, the weather's beautiful. But when I come, it I seems mean, literally right now. I mean, we'd be fishing right now. <laughs> we'd be fishing right now. I would, right now. I'd have the boat up there. We'd be fishing right now. Yeah. And guess what? You brought a freaking hurricane. Exactly. Good I'd job, send the girl to send swimsuit girl to the salon and just chill. But but we'll do it next time. We'll bring you some linear fishing. But Tim, thank you, dude. Like the shop is epic, dude. Get in here, even if you're just gonna hang out and browse around, but you can send the girl over to the salon, hang out, but it's always awesome. We will see you back out on the water or maybe doing another tackle shop walkthrough. Till then, tight lines and check them out.